What's going on, y'all? It's John Cam Ruler, and this is the album review segment of the page. Y'all go ahead and subscribe to the page. Right now, we were reviewing that Two Chains and Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne and Two Chains. Welcome to Collie Grove. Now listen, this was a well put together album. Because you know when a project is ego driven, when it's when 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 two artists come together and they go, man, let's just just, just make some music. They're gonna like it because it's us. Not this album right here. These two guys got together and said, you know what, man? How we gonna make a classic again? How we gonna make another classic that that the people gonna really love? Because that's what this album is right here. And the way they complement each other's styles is just amazing. Now, you can't say that they bring the best out of each other because individually, they can come up with this type of shit, if not better. Now, okay, well, this is what I mean when I say they complement each other's styles. Two Chains is like a headshot close range type of style, right? Whereas on the other hand, Lil Wayne is out the window, switch on the Glock, rapid fire, just drive by shooting type of shit. Both deadly in its own in its own categories, you know, and well respected as well. So that's what I mean by that. Um, the metaphors and the wordplay on this shit was just retarded nasty because you know these guys is who they is they they've been in the game so long that they're well seasoned in this type of shit so just the first song right there just let me know it was gonna be something like g6 when wayne wayne pulled up and just boom show up in this bitch sick and store up in this bitch looking like a looking like a whole jewelry store up in this bitch i can't you know translate you know whatever the word is i can't tell it to you right i gotta go listen to it that's g6 and that's the second track on it um Mm. Now, there was top tier wordplay, top tier wordplay displayed on um, Long Story Short. My dog, Two Chains, man. A plus off in parenting, I give my kids them their everything. Like, the way he switched up his style. He, yo, Two Chains, one thing about Two Chains is he's a master of switching up styles. That's the one thing about close range headshots. You could, it don't matter which gun you use. You know what I'm saying? Headshot, bomb, bomb, bomb. But the, the, the style switching is just where he really, yo, where he's really strong at. Lil Wayne, and he kept up with the same style, but it was the lyrics that really got you. It was the lyrics and the wordplay that was like, hey, yo, and the metaphors. You know, he's he's a slave to to metaphors and double entendres. He can't rap without doing it. it he can't be ignorant with these guys cannot be basic if they try to. You understand what I'm saying? That's the thing I like about these dudes. Now, a million dollars from now, dope concept. I love that song. A million dollars from now, I won't remember you. It, it, yo, I would love to make a million dollars so I can tell somebody, man, I don't remember you. I don't know who the fuck you is. I mean, yeah, man, that's one of those songs. Now, let's get on the features, right? I don't know whose idea it was to put 50 Cent on the uh who to put to make 50 cent narrate the album but i mean that was a great idea now go and get your money little duffel back boy got got a nigga by the name of two chains they call him titty boy then you got a nigga by the name of tunchi they call him louise you know whatever he was saying but yo 50 cents narration on this album was classic man i don't know where these niggas got that from but that shit was just that shit was just smart 21 Savage on Big Diamonds. Now, I would have liked to hear that song with 21 Savage by itself because when it, his, it was his chorus and his verse that made me feel like, damn, if this nigga did this shit by itself, this shit would have went hard. But it was an old school Manny Fresh um, beat from the Big Timer song. Whoa, 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 Kimo Sabe. I don't know if Wayne threw a shot at... Um, I don't know if that was a little subliminal when he was like, me and Fresh Free done done it, did it without stunting. But you know what I'm saying? Did it without stunting. Put Stunner there. Remember, Fresh and Stunner did Big Timers. And then they had that song. So with them, you know, bringing the beat back, it kind of makes sense. But I don't know. You know, Wayne be throwing them little subs in there sometimes. Um, mm. The Usher track. The Usher track, Grown and Sexy. Y'all already know Usher. That's what they bring. But everybody on the album is 40 plus. You know what I'm saying? So what you expect? 
um, PPA with Fab, Pretty Pussy Award. Now, that was an ego-driven song, you know what I'm saying? They had to say, they, them niggas was trying to go harder than each other on that shit. That was one of my favorite tracks on there, too. Um, Oprah and Gail with Benny the Butcher, you already know them niggas had to do something where they was just snapping because Benny the Butcher always delivers that raw motherfucking street boom bap shit. Um, which reminds me, Bars and Shame. Them two tracks right there was hard. Uh, Shame with the Wu-Tang sample, it was hard. You know what I'm saying? I love to hear that Havoc. They, Havoc got him a, a production on that shit. You know what I'm saying? Havoc did a beat. Bars was, you know, um, Shame was cool. It was, I could, I expected a little more, but still a flawless track. Still a good track, by the way. Um, and then Can't Believe by Rick Ross. They just picked a Rick Rossy type beat and put him on it. And, but it, but to be honest with you, it fit in the album. Every song on here is a banger. I'm not even gonna lie to you, man. I, if you like Two Chains and Wayne, this right here is a perfectly put project, man. Y'all need to go ahead and listen to it. Ja Kim Ruler, peace.